For today's money makeup lesson, I'm going to recreate the look that I wore to my friend's wedding, but I want to share lots of tips and tricks that I have for long wear eye makeup, especially if you have hooded eyes or they become hooded when you're tired. Due to the chronic illness that I suffer from, I get very tired on long days and it really shows in my eyes the most. My eyelids become very heavy. And as we talked about in one of my last Monday makeup lessons, which was for mature skin, I'll link it here and below if you missed it. But in that video, I talked about how some of these dramatic looks with lots of steps can be very heavy on the eyes and make us look tired, a little bit more mature. But thankfully, there's ways that you can have your glitter and wear it too. Now before we begin, if you don't mind this little interruption, if you're new here to the Makeup Chair channel and you enjoy makeup videos, then I might suggest clicking the subscribe button below, but if you're already subscribed, then thank you and welcome back. Now let's get started with this look. Primer is always really important for any eye makeup look, especially for long wear. Basically, an eyeshadow primer puts a barrier between the lid and the eye makeup. This prevents the natural oils from your skin coming through, and those oils have the potential to break down eyeshadow. So primer basically prevents that. It also gives an even texture for us to work on, making your blending so much easier. And if you use a tinted one, which I would recommend, it also creates an even tone. However, if this layer is too thick, you might find that it weighs down your lid and we don't want our first step to add any weight. So to counteract that, I would recommend using a damp sponge to blend this out. This will create a smoother and slightly sheerer base. Now I'm going to put my brand ambassador hat on for a moment and if you're looking for a good makeup sponge then I use the ones by Blank Canvas Cosmetics and they just sent me these adorable gift sets with a mini F20 which some of you might remember from my full face makeup routine from a few months ago but this set also comes with a sponge and they're super cute so I just had to show you. Okay, back to the lesson. Once you press and blend out the primer, you'll have a smooth base that's ready for eye makeup. Now, if you like to set your eyeshadow primer with powder, I'd actually recommend using a very finely milled face powder instead of a neutral eyeshadow. Eyeshadows tend to be a little bit heavier than face powders, but I do find that the sponge just creates a smooth base anyway, but it's totally up to you. For the next step, I'm going to contour the hood of my eyes. And I don't want to follow the shape of my eyes when my eyes are awake. I want to follow the shape that I know my tired eyes will end up having. So take a shade, at least one shade darker than your skin tone on a blending brush. And we're going to look straight on in a mirror and press above the pupil of the eye. I'm also going above the crease line, slightly higher than I usually would. What this will do is create a guide for my hooded area. I then just simply blend straight across from this point to the inner corner of the eye and blend out to the outer corner of the eye. Instead of keeping with the natural shape of my eye, we're going to go above the crease line and this will change the illusion of the depth. It will make it seem that the depth is basically starting at the crease and then going upwards rather than the crease itself being the darkest part of our eye. This means that our hood is going to be receded backwards. Once you've blended that back and forth, you should end up with something that looks like this. Next, I'm gonna take a pigment that is almost a cream to powder eyeshadow. And I talked about this product in my last lesson because it's very lightweight, but has a lot of pigment. So this will add shape without adding weight. By using a very thin brush, I can really focus on the areas that I want depth and more shape. So the outer edge of the lid for some depth, but then I'm going up into the crease line above the crease line and this will just add a little bit more to that contoured shape. But please make sure you are not blending this up too high. A smaller brush will make sure you have a little bit more control because our previous eyeshadow blended a little bit further and it should always be higher than this shadow. The great thing about this application is that it has really opened up our lid space so that we have more lid to play with, which is great for the next step. So we're going to be applying glitter, but what I like to do first is apply a very thin layer of a shimmer. This is just gonna give the glitter something to sit on top of. So use a metallic eyeshadow, something close to the shade of the glitter that you plan on applying, and apply this as your base. This will just mean we can use less glitter, but we're still gonna have a good shine. Glitters can be a little heavier, so this step really helps with this, but I do have a trick at the end for how to apply glitter. When we're applying the shimmer, however, you want to make sure that it's slightly higher than you usually would. I'm almost going over the inner crease line, going right underneath the placement that we had for the first eyeshadow. 
This has given us a lot more lid space to play with, but also if our hood starts to drop, at least we know that we're not adding any extra darkness to the hood. This should hopefully catch the light and create the illusion of brightness, making our lids look a little bit less hooded. It's like turning on a lamp in a dark shady room. Time for glitter, and this glitter is already in a sticky solution, which I would recommend for hooded and mature eyes. If you use a dry glitter that needs to be used with a sticky primer or a mixing solution that needs to be applied first, you're adding a lot more weight, and glitter is heavy enough. But if you use a glitter that's already in a solution, it means less weight. And by some amazing coincidence, this glitter is exactly the same shade as my shoes, which I can't tell you how fun I found that. This is going over the top of the shimmer that we already applied, but because glitter is a little bit heavier, I'm only going to be applying it on the stable part of my lid. And I'm going to let the shimmer that we already applied do all the shine on the more mobile area of the lid. So keep this a little bit lower and then just blend upwards to disperse the glitter evenly. And the great thing is this glitter sets in place. Now for liner, I don't like to line on long days because my eye shape will end up changing. So what I do is just apply a thin invisible liner right at the lash line just to make my lashes look a little bit denser. I also like to line my upper waterline to add some depth. So you can add a slightly darker tone to the top and even a nude pencil to the bottom. And this will really open up your eyes and add some more shape. But don't worry if it's a little bit too ticklish for you to do, you can skip this step if you want. Okay, so I added very heavy lashes and I kind of regret it. I do love big lashes because they camouflage how tired my eyes can look, but they also weigh down your eyes. So I kind of wish I'd gone for less weighted lashes, but we live and learn and I make the mistakes so that you don't have to. So maybe opt for just a really good mascara, some maybe softer, deeper lashes, some individuals instead. Even though from far away, these lashes looked pretty good in photos. And there you go, my top tips for applying a special occasion eye makeup look, even if your eyes are hooded or tired or mature, and I hope that it helped you. If you do have any more tips that you'd like to share, then I'd love to read them. Or if you do have any questions, I am here to help. So just feel free to comment them below, or you can message me on Instagram. It's at Sinead Katie. And as always, my friends, say it with me. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. You are doing the best you can, and that's amazing. And I'll see you in the next one. Also, I'm so glad that you liked my mistletoe video. My makeup and mythology videos, they don't get many views, which I don't mind, but they do help people relax and that just means a lot. And I love researching the stories. So I'm already researching next month's, which I hope you'll enjoy too.